Good morning. You're welcome to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Verme Paulson. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. And we can only say Happy Democracy Day happy to you. Happy Democracy Day. Yeah, 29. Uh, what am I 25 saying? 25 years. <laughs> 25 <laughs> years of democracy, yes. uninterrupted democracy. Yes. I know we've had democracy uh, after independence. We've had democracy in 1979. We had uh, Shagari come into office and but now is the time that we've had uninterrupted I, I usually i usually oh, i'm tempted to say uninterrupted power supply <laughs> but we've <laughs> had uninterrupted uh, democracy. democracy for 25 years it's yeah. something to celebrate mm -hmm. in spite of all the odds yeah there's been quite some challenges but knowing that our voices are still heard sometimes maybe not all the time mm -hmm. um it's it's something to be grateful for mm -hmm. And I know they say, you know, democracy is government of the people, for the people, by, by the, the people. people. Yeah. So um, I know we might not be where we want to, where we, we, are, we see ourselves to be, but we're working on it. Mm -hmm. And that 25 years obviously shows something. It shows that, you know, even our leaders are trying their best to ensure that the country is being governed by the people, for the people, in the interests, you know, of the people. I don't know if we've gotten there yet. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we probably haven't, but it's a trajectory of good things to come. And hopefully one day in the next 50, 100 years, we say, yes, we did it. I, w I just want to be alive when we get it right in this democracy. Yeah. So that I know that when I'm leaving this world, my children will, um, will experience something better than what I experienced. Yes. Not hoping that I'll go to heaven and start telling God directly that mm. <laughs> remember Nigeria for the sake of my children. <laughs> no, I don't want that. I want it in my time. And that's why every individual who is Nigerian should do their civic responsibilities. Vote when you're supposed to vote, mm -hmm. cry out when you're supposed to cry mm -hmm. out, complain if you need to, and praise where the, there's need yeah. to praise yeah. uh, so that we, we move on. Because mm -hmm. the bulk of the things that go wrong or go right depend on how much the people lent their voice to mm -hmm. it. So yeah. it's really our fault or our glory. Yes, because our, our, our leaders came from us, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, we need to understand that you are a Nigerian first before you are Yoruba, Igbo, Ibibio, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So being a patriotic Nigeria, um, you, sh you have to ensure that you want the best for your country. And in wanting the best for your country, you should be able to elect leaders that you know can move this country forward. Mm -hmm. Like you said, um, you don't want to go to heaven telling God, please mm -hmm. remember, please. go and help Nigeria. Yeah, and yeah. even if, you know how they say heaven, heaven helps those who help themselves? Um, even if we're saying we want God to help even us, you need to... No, it's not in the Bible, it's just a <laughs> saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you need to put, put in the work. Yeah. In as much as you want this super, super um, being to come help you if you are not putting actions in place to ensure that you are moving forward like the president said in his speech he said you know jump on this progressive train with mm. me so if you're saying it's a progressive train and you're not putting those actions then we're not going to go mm. anywhere so hopefully we get there and commend you know the people that are doing good work in Nigeria the people that are not you mean it might just be some form of criticism and I love that. I mean, that's what the media does that I love about it, whereby we let them know, okay, you're not doing it right here. You're doing it right here. We commend you. We clap for you. Give you an applause when you're doing it right. But when you're not doing it right, it's okay to give you constructive criticism. And because it's a government for the people, of the people and by the people, you should be able to hear our voices and implement those changes mm. so hopefully in the next few years um it's nice that we've cel we're celebrating 25 years of interrupted democracy but hopefully uninterrupted you just said interrupted democracy. uninterrupted yeah. that's what i said of uninterrupted mm. democracy and hopefully as we go on it's still democracy because if you look at mm. other african countries there's some who are still in military rule so Hopefully it goes on and we just have a better Nigeria for us yeah. all. Uh, but that's for us, right? Um, I know that we're going to go back to what the president said and take all that and all. But uh, before we go to what the people on the streets are saying about democracy and Democracy Day, I'd like to point out one thing that the president said that really struck me. The uh, election is just one aspect of democracy. In fact, a very minute aspect mm -hmm. of democracy. It goes beyond just electing the people. 
after you elect the people, what do you do to make sure these people stay in line? Because that's the, the key to everything. You can elect a good man. He gets into office and is corrupted. But when he knows that when he's coming back, he's going to face the backlash that mm -hmm. is certain from the people, mm -hmm. then he will sit up. Yeah. So you're helping that person to help you. How much are we doing about this? Uh, but that's not for me to say, at least not at this time, mm -hmm, before mm -hmm. we go into well, the presidency. Right yeah. Yeah. Let's hear what the people on the streets are talking about. Democracy and democracy they were celebrating. A democracy ought to be fair, fairness. But in our own country, I can't give 50% of fairness to democracy. If democracy will be fair in future, I believe we'll get there. Uh, democracy is a good idea to Nigeria. It's just that we need good leaders to lead us. And this particular man there, the president there, he's trying his best. You understand? We just have to give them a chance so that we could reap the fruits of democracy. I think Nigeria is practicing democracy. It's just that there is nowhere in the whole world, you understand, that you don't have glitches during elections or in terms of uh, the leaders ruling. Perhaps what we are practicing is quite different from what is being practiced in the Western world, you don't have the money, you can't practice democracy in Nigeria. I don't see any good thing coming from democracy in Nigeria. I don't see. Democracy in Nigeria is no longer government for the people. The problem we are having now is they are not even listening to the masses. It can work if, if they can do what they are supposed to do, not being greedy. And then the focus and to, to work is better than military regime. So we are still in the working stage. So it's still a growing democracy. We are not yet passing democracy. This is far from democracy. So I think we should learn what democracy is. Democracy is for the people. But what we are seeing in Nigeria is that uh, it's for some cabals, for some particular set of people. It's, uh, it's, I can say indirectly it's taking us back. Why it's taking us back is that uh, because of the political uh, people that are surrounded by the, the democracy, they have now seen it as a, a way of uh, making their personal, uh, what do you call it, money. Unlike during the time of uh, military. But nevertheless, democracy is still better. But it's only in our side here, they are not, they are not passing it as passing it well. It's not practiced the way it's supposed to be practiced, unlike the Western world. If it is practiced the way it's supposed to be practiced, uh, by now, Nigeria will have been be very okay. And the problem we are having with democracy, I can say maybe because we are not well developed or our individual uh, belief that, okay, once I, once I go to that uh, post, I get to me, it's an avenue for me to make money, you understand me, for myself, and my family. I you get me? They see democracy, I you get to serve people, to make people to benefit. But in our side here, yeah, we are the ones worshipping them. Instead of them to be, to be serving us, we are the ones serving them. A democracy ought to be fair, fairness. But... All right, that's what the people are saying, the word on the street. Mm. Democracy needs to be fair. Mm. It needs to have transparency. Our leaders need to be more accountable. Um, and the one it person, needs to be about the people. Yeah, and one person was saying, you know, they don't even listen to the masses. Um, and democracy is not what they practice in the Western world. Like, I'm just speaking from the little mm -hmm. things that they yeah. said. Um, I know that it's not the way it's being practiced in the Western world, but I need us to stop looking at the Western world. We need to have a culture for ourselves. How do we want to practice our own leadership? Mm. It should be about us because they are not Africans. They can never be Africans. And guess yeah, what? But, you can but never be European. But I know that there is, yeah. you know, there is um, maybe like principles guiding certain things. Yes. And I know that they need to, the fundamental thing here is they need to listen to the people. But I'm just saying there's no need for comparison. We need to let our voices, make sure our voices are heard, and that's it. Yeah, to listen to the people is even a one-directional thing, and that shouldn't be. Democracy is about the people, so we need to, they need to listen to us. We need to listen to them. We need to participate as much as they Maybe are participating. Yes, so that is democracy. Um, we should find a way that works for us, but the fundamental thing is that 
governance generally and democracy generally, no matter what system you're using, should be about the people. Mm -hmm. Once you are cut off from the people, what they are uh, facing and everything that is happening, then it is no longer democracy. It's just a civil rule. And we should have this distinction between a democracy and a civil rule. Democracy concentrates on what the people will enjoy, what the people can say, how, how, how long the people can be in it, how strong their voices are, and all that. That is democracy. So if we practice uh, democracy and the people are not involved, then it is not democracy, even if the, the civilians that are ruling it, are ruling the, the, the society. Mm -hmm. So if you talk about infrastructure, any kind of government can give infrastructure. Yeah. They do roads, they do bridges, they mm -hmm. build Even houses, they rule. do all these things. Yes. So that is not what marks democracy. That's, those are not dividends of democracy. It's how much the voices of the people are heard mm -hmm. during democracy. That is what makes it uh, democracy. So if there's an army general somewhere there, that doesn't do anything unless he asks the people or feels the pulse of the people and whatever he does is because of what he knows the people want, mm -hmm. then that is more democratic than the civilian who will just go there and sit on his high because house and not listen. Because you're being autocratic at that yes. point. You're being an authoritarian. I agree with you because you cannot... It, it's just like, I'm coming to you, I'm going, and I'm saying, I'm giving this to you. Is it really what you want? Or is it what you need at that point? Mm -hmm. The moment it's not what you need, you would never appreciate it, even though I'm trying my best. But if I come to you and I say, Yamgo, what do you want? What can I do for you? How can I help you? Be, how can I help your life become better? And you let me know that, okay, this is what I want, X, Y, Z. And I implement that you would actually thank me for it. And you feel like your voices are being heard. And I think that's what we just need from the government. Because it's one thing to say, we want to do a coastal highway. How many people want that coastal highway? There are lots of people that I've had conversations with that would tell me, Rume, I would prefer if we have a train. Mm -hmm. We do not have a railway system, a good railway system that cuts across so many states in Nigeria. So if we had that, transportation would be better. When it comes to even shipping goods like cargoes to other parts of the country, that would be better. But then you come and you say, I'm giving you a coastal highway. It's a good thing. That was Don't let budget wrong. anyway. Mm -hmm. It wasn't there. It just, it's, it just it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing. It's a, obviously, it's infrastructure. So it's a good thing. But is it really what we want at the moment? So we might not really appreciate it as much as something that we really want. So I'm sure the government, they're doing their best. They're thinking, how can we help the people? But it is important that you have a conversation with us. Mm -hmm. I, I, ask us what we want. We let you know. You come back and say, okay, we've heard what you, what you want. This is how we're going to do it. So it makes it, it makes it seem like a community. We're all doing it together. Than someone at the top saying, this is what I'm going to give you. If you're not appreciative of it, that's your business. And sometimes they will come and tell you that it didn't start in my time. Hey, mm. you, you think we're fools. We, it didn't start in your time. Maybe uh, there was a doctor document to that effect that there should be a coastal highway. Let's just use yeah. coastal highway. That's yeah. not the only thing. Uh, but it's also constitutional that every governor can sign the debt warrant, uh, the debt uh, uh, for anybody who has been uh, sentenced to death. Mm -hmm. you, you sign it so that they kill him. Mm -hmm. they, you, they execute him. Yeah. Yeah. But how many governors sign it? That is because the two fundament, fundamental questions are, uh, is it really necessary to do it? And if I don't do it, will I be breaking any law? Mm. So you find that you're not breaking any law. You find that that is not absolutely necessary, and then you don't sign it. Are they are, are they not things that are coming from from uh, from the past? So sometimes some things are there that have been instituted by previous governments and all that. But do you need to do them? If you don't need to do them, find out what is necessary at that point mm. and do it. The president mentioned that democracy is a way of life. Mm -hmm. well, it's a good thing, mm -hmm. way of life. That's how it should be. Everybody should be involved in it. But the way of life for who? Because it seems as if it's there's a different way of life yeah. for, for <laughs> the elite and another yeah. way of life yeah. for, for yeah. the masses. Mm -hmm. And that shouldn't be. It's all, yeah. of, all of us. It's all about, you know, Nigerians, everyone here, Nigerians in Nigeria, Nigerians in the diaspora, because they also want... Most times, the reason why people leave is because they feel like the environment is not really conducive for them. And so there might be people who leave for other reasons, but the bulk of the, the chunk of the people who leave Nigeria is because, oh, I, I don't think the system works for me. So as long as we have a good system that works for everyone and we all make 
everyone feel loved, everyone feel heard, everyone feel understood. That's it. That's democracy. Abacha was a dictator, but how many companies were in Nigeria in Abacha's time, and mm. how many are there in a democratic setting like this one? That's that a we good have? question. Everyone is leaving. Yeah. Guinness is leaving. Procter and Gamble is leaving. Everybody. So mm -hmm. in health, in, in entertainment, in everything, people are leaving in yeah. droves. So how are we going to survive? What is this, this democracy that is not working for our visitors and is not working for, for the people, us for as us? Well, yeah. So it's terrible. And there are things that m were missing in the president's speech, as far as I'm concerned. Two of the glaring ones is th are that I expected him to talk about, because he's talking about democracy, I expected him to talk about maybe his thinking about reforming the electoral system mm -hmm. to make it better. Uh, the former president, Jonathan, told him about the embarrassment that litigations and all other things mm -hmm. give to a country like Nigeria mm -hmm. and all that. But he didn't say anything about reforming. He talked a lot about the electoral system, and all, but he didn't say anything okay, about yeah, reforming. Yeah. And I'm surprised that at this point, the tripartite committee, the presidency, or anything, he, they he still touched don't on the, have... on the minimum. Yes, anyway. that they are going to send submit, something. Submit. Yeah, so yeah. I thought by now something definite will be happening. Mm -hmm. And this is probably because Labour relaxed and said, mm -hmm. okay, let's give them a chance. And that's why when Labour comes and does some things that you feel they are very rash. You can't you, even you blame, can't blame them. them. Yeah, you can't. It's, it's serious. All right. Um, enough banter. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be deep diving into this conversation, which talks about 25 years of democracy, the milestones and the challenges that we've had so far. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And today we're looking at 25 years of democracy in Nigeria. And we'll be discussing the milestones and challenges that we've had as a nation so far. Now joining us to have a conversation on what our democracy has been like in 25 years is Dr. Omoshala Deji. He's a political science scientist rather and professor chris mustafa wonkobia jr is a convener country first movement good morning gentlemen thank you for joining us good morning good morning good morning my pleasure to be here. all right i can say happy democracy day to you both of you and to you <laughs> okay so we're looking at 25 years of democracy in nigeria uninterrupted democracy in nigeria now when you hear of 25 years you definitely hear of a big number it's called a silver jubilee and that's what we're celebrating today mm. if you know you were to just rate what our democracy has been over the years i know there's been hurdles Right. But if you were to speak on what our democracy has been um, over 25 years, what would be your own take on it, your own opinion about it? Mm -hmm. And I'll start with Chris Mustafa Wokobia. Yeah, but uh, b before we enter there, we, we would like to know your takeaways, your major takeaways from the speech that the president just gave, uh, so that when we begin to answer that, uh, we, can, we can know the direction we're going to. So what are your uh, great greatest takeaways from the speech the president just made, uh, Dr. Chris? Well, uh, the president is mine. Uh, I'll say happy democracy day. Mm -hmm. uh, some huge reservations and I'll explain in the course of this dialogue. I, but let me say clearly that uh, the president's speech, the first two paragraphs, if you like, uh, did invoke deep nostalgia for many, which I was deeply involved in the battle for the actualization of, of uh, June 12, um, when Korodud, when Abacha's gun boats knocked down about 80 students, I, I expected that uh, Mr. President would have remembered and recognized the matters, uh, the young students, the young boys and young girls who trooped out to the streets to protest for the actualization of June 12. But um, interestingly, he did remember quite a lot of uh, uh, statesmen and those who died in the course of the struggle, those who have gone to the great beyond, and those who are still here with us. Um, he did sound like a Democrat in that speech. He talked about the battles, he talked about the pain, he, he commended the media, uh, it was quite a profound effort in reenacting the battle of a nation and the people for the value. 
values of democracy. You remember when Winston Churchill, who said long time ago, uh, precisely during the Second World War, that the battles they, are, they were fighting them was for the government of the people, by the people, and for the people not to depart from the face of the act. And interestingly, the school board would define democracy as a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And it was a definition of democracy made profound by Abraham Lincoln. As I talk uh, this morning with you, uh, the questions are profound. Is it 25 years of democracy? Uh, better put 25 years of civil rule because uh, likely what we have is a government of a few, by the few, and for the few. Or a government of political operators, by political operators, and for political operators. That's the best uh, definition we can give to what we have because uh, if we call it a democracy, giving uh, 100,000 or 150,000 as minimum wage when members of the National Assembly and political operators receive millions of naira salaries in a month uh, will not be a hard call or a hard sell. But sadly, because it's about a few, by a few, and for a few, certain, certain fundamentals that should define democracy does not exist. What we have at best is, uh, um, is civil rule and at worst, cacistocracy. Dr. Deji, what's your opinion from uh, what the president, uh, the speech the president gave? Well, the speech of the president, um, the president made some very valid um, points in the speech. I like the way it started by, you know, remembering those we can call the heroes of democracy. And one thing you make about is remembers of these heroes was that he also choose to celebrate the living. You know, and it's not only those that are dead that celebrated, the celebrated uh, Professor Bola uh, at KLA, we still alive, and um, King Tony, we still alive, and a host of other people. Another unique thing about the president's celebration of those that fought for democracy in our country uh, is that the list is uh, bipartisan. It didn't just pick people who are supposed to be uh, friend or people who are going to be close to it. Ah, you had Evangel, who he celebrated, is one of the most fierce critics of the, the president before he emerged as president. So I kind of applaud him in that regard for at least celebrating the dead and also celebrating the living and, you know, drawing up a bipartisan list which comprises of both his friends and people that don't think, you know, um, align with him so much in terms of um, political limits and you know, um, political orientation. Then um, another thing that I noticed about the president's speech is that uh, maybe because this is the first year of his um, presidency, so the speech may be like um, what we can call all these um, seasonal things, like in, you know, um, in series, because there are kind of important things that the president should have touched on that um, he maybe intentionally or otherwise, or maybe and that, you know, refused to. Um, touch on that. So I was waiting for the president to talk about the uh, role of democracy in development because the, um, the Western assertion, those that hold democracy to us, the assertion is mainly based on three, that okay, democracy is going to bring the enchantment of rights, then the democracy is going to guarantee you um, freedom, the freedom to operate, and it's also going to bring about development. The president talked um, a little bit about um, freedom and rights, you know, when he mentioned the Nigerian Labour Congress and it was kind of like applauding that okay nobody was um we chanted and all that well I don't think that should have made it to a presidential speech because um it is people's right to protest and when their needs are not being met, you know, they have the right to kind of like protest against the uh, first working conditions or um take home pay. So I don't think that after that we didn't we chant anybody mm -hmm. we didn't do um, within the kind of like, I'm treat anybody, that shouldn't have made it to a presidential speech because it is a natural thing that is expected in a um, democracy. So the, the aspect of development itself is quite missing and sadly that's what most Nigerians want to hear about. If I can content analyze your introductory speech in the studio, it 
focus more on development. You know, um, if you look into my art right now, you know, it's more on the development. I'm sure if you examine um, top mind too, you know, you see that it will be bothered about the development um, in the country where we have been, you know, um, all these years and where a system of government that is propounded to kind of like bring development are still to bring that development in our part of the world. So um, in some ways, the president is, um, is quite good, but then, you know, um, it didn't touch much on the key things that bother the minds of the people, you know, but I mean, that sort of remembering the heroes of democracy, I can imagine those that are alive, you know, that they will feel proud of themselves which is a good thing, you know. Imagine, you know, a presidential broadcast, the president, the president of the country mentioning your name, your friends and family are listening for an action you take, you know, like about 30 years ago. That's commendable on the part of the president, but um, the, the, the speech still leaves some crucial things to be desired. Mm. Mm. <coughs> so, Prof. Mo uh, Mustafa, um, Rumi asked you a question earlier before I, I just uh, jumped in to, uh, to let us hear what your thoughts were on the president's speech this morning. So we might want to go back to that. 25 years yeah. of uninterrupted democracy. Uh, what do you think? Um, Yangu, Rumi, I, I want to say that uh, in my opening remark, I did uh, attempt a run into that question when I said that uh, uh, largely 25 years since May 29, 1999, and uh, it's been more of a uh, civil rule than of uh, uh, concern, programmatic for the world and of the Nigerian people. Uh, my brother there did just talk about uh, the fact that in the president's speech, the fundamentals uh, which should underline a democratic order, which for, for every intent and purpose is the reason governments exist, the protection of lives and property, the provision of social welfare, and better life for the masses of our people, did not uh, feature largely in the president's speech. Um, in 25 years, it's been more of uh, a circuitous route, my role. In 25 years, it's more of a uh, civil rule than of uh, uh, making the people the summon bond of the basis for which uh, democracy exists or subsists. Uh, the only thing largely that we can celebrate today is the fact that we have had an uninterrupted uh, era of uh, civilian rule, mm -hmm. an uninterrupted uh, era of uh, people other than those in the military holding sway over our country. Beyond that, uh, what we have, we still have challenges of uh, freedoms, freedom of speech, freedom of press. Um, as you and I talk, young go, as we talk, rumor, you are aware that journalists have been hounded and harassed. Journalists have been harangued. Um, just a few weeks ago, uh, a certain Ojuku was taken away from Lagos and brought to Abuja and detained until there was protestation. Uh, we have... Um, gradually and consistently seeing the stifling and the narrowing down, the thinning down of the right of a people to protest. Uh, even in the speech today, our president did um, uh, infer to the fact that uh, the right to disagree may not be so very welcomed by his government when he did talk about uh, the position of the NLC and the right of organized labor to protest and how they feel about it. But let me say very clearly that the right to protest, the right to disagree, uh, organized protestation is one of the uh, beauties and the, the streets that leads to a democracy. You know, um, I have said time and again, and I want to repeat it here, that the street to freedom, the street to greatness, the street to democracy, the street to uh, everything that is necessary to make a society fairer is paved with the freedom of speech, the freedom to disagree, the freedom to hold assembly, the freedom to protest. These are sacrosanct uh, narratives in building a truly democratic state. 
a truly democratic space, a truly dem democratic place. And save and accept those who should pretend our nation understand this reality, you know, are set for the blessed, blessed republic will be like the wait for Bodo. And I want to say clearly here at this moment that uh, I think that what we must beg of Mr. President and those who should pretend our enterprise is to understand that those who disagree with government, those who are very critical of government, are actually not enemies of states. They are actually those who love our country, and they are those who want our country to do well. I, I, I want to say, Roma, that uh, going forward, I, I pray that the media becomes immensely proactive in asking strong questions. I pray that the civil society rises to the challenge in asking proactive questions. I also pray that those who um, are around Mr. President consistently tell him that um, we all stick with us in the Nigerian enterprise, those in government and those out of government, and that critical thought and critical opinion is necessary to make them do right. I also pray that uh, uh, looking back in the 25 years and uh, laying a template for the years ahead, we must understand that we have no other country but peace, and that peace singing, seek of and seek, and the likes will do this country no good. Uh, the time has come for us to consistently call out government when it's doing wrong, and consistently applaud government when it's doing right. Uh, that is the minimum that we expect going forward. And maybe in the course of this dialogue, I would um, uh, be the chance to score uh, the successive. I think we've had about five administrations since 1999. Uh, perhaps we'll be uh, able to say uh, where we've done very well, where we have done well, and where we must proactively as a people demand the government does right. Okay. So, thank you so much for that. I mean, we all hope for a Nigeria mm -hmm. that would be what you've just described, looking back at 25 years. And, of course, we obviously need to keep calling them out for accountability. Okay, so I'm going to go to someone else who just joined us. We're just being joined by Comrade Mark Adebayo. He's a national spokesperson, Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Good morning, viewers. Good morning, Prof. Good morning. Good morning, my brother. Happy Democracy Day to Happy you. Happy Democracy Day to you. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm just going to get your opening remark on where we where we are right now as a nation. We're celebrating 25 years of democracy, which we'll call a silver jubilee. And I can only think of 25 years anniversary of a married couple. You mm -hmm. definitely see kids grown. You see dividends. You see love. You see flourishing um, in the family. But then in Nigeria, we can't really say we're having those dividends of democracy. But I want to get your opening remark on that, on how we've come here in 25 years. Well, uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, just a little bit of a caveat here. We are not celebrating Democracy Day in Nigeria. That, that's the wrong word. We are just recognizing the day that uh, the military left power and uh, gave power back to civilians. So it's, there's nothing to, to celebrate in actual fact. We are just marking it. We are just... You know, it's just a date because uh, there's nothing really to celebrate in terms of the economy, nothing to celebrate. At a 3.7% inflation rate, there's nothing to celebrate. At over 70% of uh, uh, of our rules of motor rules, at uh, the level of a high insecurity, agency, kidnapping, armed robberies, on a daily basis, even in the center of Abuja, People are getting kidnapped on a daily basis, consistently. Consistently. So, what are we celebrating? Democracy itself is not uh, uh, democracy itself is not an achievement. Democracy is a means for to, to be able to actuate good governance, justice, you know, rule of law, and so on and so forth. We have democracy has been either uh, totally realized or has become dictatorial or it has, it has become an instrument of underdevelopment, has become an instrument of repression, oppression, an instrument of corruption, whereby the ruling clique 
I know, I've decided that, okay, the government is meant only for themselves. Why they say democracy is for the people by the people? Are, you know, these people, they don't believe in that a description of democracy as such. They don't believe that whoever is in government must, it, 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 it's, it's not about winning election, it's about state capture. So, we are experiencing state capture. And when you have state capture, the people that are in power believe that every, they are against every uh, benefit of state to themselves, you know, so to themselves. So, just like Louis XVI says that, uh, let us say more, the state, uh, the state. So, that is the kind of situation we have. We are, the people in government are living well. The, the people in government have enough security. The people in government are able to educate their children in any part of the world. You cannot say the same thing for the regular Nigerians. You cannot say the same thing for the regular salary. And you cannot say the same thing for the for the hard working Nigeria, even the people that are in the in the formal se sector. You know, uh, the the president this morning said uh, his reforms have caused action but they are necessary. Mm. You know, he said his, his reforms have caused he, he organized the fact that there's action with the land as a result of his of his policies. But he is saying it's reform. There are no reforms in this government. This government, has, there's a total difference between reforms and uh, a staccato of neoliberal Confucianist policies that, that are bringing hardship, that are bringing under development and integration in the country. These are not reforms. I want to see a reform whereby I have a president who is able to connect with the hardship, with the, you know, the, the needs, the aspirations of the Nigerian people. I did a reform whereby I will say, President that says that, look, uh, I am cutting down all my A's, uh, personal assistant, special assistant, executive assistant by 70%, my salaries and equipment. I'm looking for a reform whereby I, my president will not save 21 billion to, re, to, to renovate the, 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 the residence of the first president. I'm looking for a reform whereby we will see in the lifestyle of our president and the governors and other people in, in power who are live their, their, their lifestyle to be reflective of the state of the Nigerian economy. And not, not a president that will approve almost two billion naira to buy cars for his wife. Not a president that so th th these are not reforms. These are you know neoliberal Confucianist policies that are bringing hardship and other development to, to this country. If you want to see reform, go to the United Arab Emirates. If you want to see reform, how they have made use of their petrol dollar, go to Qatar. If you want to see reform, how they have made use of their uh, their petrol dollars to develop their country, to develop their people, you go to Saudi Arabia. You know, this are before oh, before the West destroyed uh, Libya. That was like a, a, a European country in Africa, you know, because Gaddafi, Colonel Gaddafi, made sure that the people benefited directly from the resources of their land in the area of housing, in the area of free education, in the area of free health. Yes, it was oppressive, it was a dictator, it was a dictator, but he was he brought development to, to Libya after the building. So, what have become of Libya? Libya became a failed state, but he was and when Libya became a failed state. We, we no longer had the buffer power, you know, to contain the activities of terrorists that are now affecting the entire region now, because of the because of the collapse of Libya. You understand? So, what are we talking about? Hmm. Uh, yeah, 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 we are not celebrating okay. democracy. We are just marking a day okay. in the calendar in Nigeria. But oh, yeah. Thank you, I'm thank you, comrade. Me. Thank you, comrade. We'd like to also thank just you, give a. Uh, We'd like to also just give a chance to uh, Dr. Deji. He has not uh, given us a summary of what he feels about the last yeah. 25 years that we've had uninterrupted democracy. So, Dr. Deji, your turn. Before we go into X-raying um, the, president's, the speech. president's speech and uh, the challenges and the gains of democracy in 25 years. So, let's hear your, your summary of what the last 25 years has been like as a democratic state. Dr. Deji, can you hear me? Okay, I think um, his audio or something, his connection yeah. is uh, uh, having issues at this moment. But we still have uh, Professor uh, Mustafa Wokobia and uh, Comrade Mark Adebayo. Now, um, let me go to you, Professor. We've had 
25 years. We, we cannot dispute that, no matter how it is, whether it's civilian rule or democratic rule. But we've had an, un, in a, an uninterrupted 25 years of yeah. whatever rule that we've had. What do you think have been the greatest challenges of our democratic process in these 25 years? I think you might be muted, so you might have to unmute. Yeah, we can't hear you, Doctor or Prof. Hello? Okay, okay we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. go ahead. Can you ask that question again, please? Okay, the question was, what do you think has been, uh, or what are the most challenges that we've had in the past 25 years of uninterrupted whatever we have? <laughs> <laughs> Let me say to you that uh, first, uh, one of the greatest regrets for the progressive left was that when in 1999, Abu Salam and the Rupert to civilians, uh, we did not trust that administration and its promises. So we let people who were not prepared to govern take the reins of leadership and. That's one of the greatest regrets of the progressive left. And between 1999 and today, what we have seen is largely um, a space dominated by those who perhaps were very unprepared for the challenges of governance. And um, what I attempt to do here in answer to your question is to say that uh, what appeared limitedly promising was perhaps the first eight years that we have President Obasanjo who attempted a few reforms. Uh, before 2001, uh, telephony was more of an elitist thing. And with the advent of the GSM innovation, uh, your good man, my security man, uh, our domestic staff have access to mobile telephony. And it has helped grow private businesses. Uh, outside that and a few flashpoints, we have seen, like I said initially, uh, what can be described at best, uh, civil and uh, at worst fakistocracy, where a few individuals who perhaps have an opportunity to emerge in our political kaleidoscope have made the best of our collective tool for selfish and egocentric purposes. Uh, that's why I do my brother when he was talking about uh, what we have as just a memorial of uh, a date in our calendar. Perhaps that date when Nigeria stepped out uh, on the 12th of June uh, 1993 to exercise their rights to an elect who should govern them. And uh, it gave birth to an election that is uh, just the freest and fairest in our historicity. Besides and beyond that, um, what we have uh, people who look at our National Assembly, for instance, is the most expensive National Assembly practically in, in God's world. And look at our executives. We have presidents, we have had presidents who have as much as 300 aides. The Senate president who had as much as 380 aides. And, and they all did their hands into our collective cookie jar, into our collective patrimony, and they dish freebies as though uh, Nigeria were uh, better than the United States of America. You have lawmakers who earn uh, cumulatively more than the American president and senior, yeah. and you ask yourself what kind of leadership uh, does that when we are a judge, the country with the largest population of very poor people in the world. You know, our poverty index uh, is benumbing, befundling, and uh, and government doesn't think that something must be done. In calling out the people to tighten their seat belts, government ha doesn't even think that it should lead by example. And I, I think I'm good. I think as we address uh, 25 years of civil rule, one, what we must do is locate the issues in proper perspective. Because it was a really book that said, the day shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You know, if you don't want uh, the truth, then we'll continue in this circuitous remodel. If you don't want the truth, 
then we will continue in the journey to nowhere. I, I want to say fundamentally, because uh, one of the greatest, uh, and in, indeed laughable, that rather than address the fundamental issues of state, rather than think about the laws as to how it affects resource control, devolution of power, rather than address fundamental issues as, as to how it affects creation of wealth and the growth of the economy, rather than address fundamental issues as to how it affects education, health care, and security of life and properties, what we have as a government that is interested in one the lost. Um, on record, this government has spent just over 87 billion on wanderlust trips here and there. This government has spent over 90 billion subsidizing religion. Permit my choice of words, you know, because I do not want to personally uh, address issues that has to do with how people approach their God and serve God. You know, I think that religion should be, and it is a private affair. But when government spends billions subsidizing religion and refuses to attend to the demands of those who should pretend the educational sector, as you and I talk, government has not effectively resolved the issues and the contradictions around and surrounding ASU. As you and I talk, government has not addressed the fundamental issues surrounding the demands for a living wage for our people. As you and I talk, only about 400 59 members of the National Assembly take home more than 300 billion naira yearly. And you call it a democracy? No. It's a government of a few, for a few, and by a few. And until we understand that there are fundamental issues that must be addressed, rather than the platitudes, which of course is what we call the June 12th celebration today, rather than the cosmetics, which is, of course, what people think, and, oh, yeah, we have to celebrate the heroes. We all thought people died for, for, for what we have to be. And let me give you an instance. For a fundamental point of deviation, you know, um, Yambul, I don't know whether you're aware of uh, a group of boys who were called the Mad Boys in 1994, 93, I don't know whether you remember those boys, which are the Bundaru, the Bundaru and Co. Who had hijacked a Nigerian Airways plane yeah. in protestation against the overthrow of Shonekos uh, government by Apacha. Yeah. And those boys spent a decade in Niger prisons. Those boys came back to this country. So many of those boys, some have died, some are suffering neglect, some have been abandoned, nobody's thinking and talking about them, and if you were in an organized country, those boys were terrorists, they were people who rose up in protest against uh, those who have stifled the democratic space, against those who were killing people uh, uh, in 1993 and 1994, but these boys are largely abandoned, you know, without a sense of humility, I would like to be responsible for the upkeep of some of them, personally, you know. And I remember when people talk about celebrating democracy acts, then what kind of democracy? You know, do we cherry pick? We say the ones that are seemingly convenient in our value uh, regime of value narrative. And then a few days ago, Richard just came out, Richard Obunda just came out of surgery for a broken leg. His old father, who is about 75 years, is abandoned with the, the life of a young boy who, in his, uh, who at 1920, took the destiny of the country on his shoulder. So many of these boys have been abandoned. You know, so I think that this country is largely hypocritical. There's so much of sycophancy in this country. There's so much of uh, abnegation of fundamental issues and challenge. And that's why I likely agree with my brothers who are saying that, yes, beyond the fact that we, we may say that, okay, we've been able to sustain civilian governance for 25 years, have we actually met, or has this era, has this administration, has this civil rule actually met the expectations of the Nigerian people? Mm -hmm. Yango, over the past 25 years, Nigerians have been killed and mowed down 
because government and successive administrations have not been able to protect lives and properties. Our educational system is in comatose because government has refused to invest in education. Our health care is in shambles because successive administrations have refused to invest in health care. And largely, uh, what we have is an age and an era of sycophancy, an era of wonder lost, an era where the few who are privileged to have access to our collective patrimony, dish and deal with our collective patrimony as though they are not answerable to anybody. So I think that um, what we are doing this morning is perhaps a post-mortem and a call to leadership to proactive action. All right. I mean, you've highlighted a lot of challenges, but to balance it out, maybe there might just be some milestones that we've had. Um, and I would like to ask Deji, are there any milestones you think we ca that are worth celebrating in this past 25 years? Well, thanks for the question. First, what I can say is um, the milestone that we have is that um, regardless of interest, as whether personal, whether ethnic, whether social cultural, one of the milestones is regardless of the flow in the election, you know, regardless of how the classic the leader is, or how the sporting the leader is, if you don't know, need to, you know, I think it was rapidly transformed from one government to another, despite, you know, the flaws in our democratic process. But you see, on a day like this, you miss a year as well, sincerely, in the sense that, you know, you wish that when you see flaws, in the, the democratic system, that these are obvious flaws. Whether those um, flaws are ratified by the Supreme Court, you know, doesn't change um, it in the mind of the people. So I miss a Yaradwa on a day like this. I wish I see a president that we kind of like admit that the electoral process has great flaws and try to kind of like um, say what he's going to do or what he is doing to make sure that we strengthen our electoral process, which is where the democratic process itself has to be. You know, but what I heard is a president that was trying very hard to kind of like validate his own election. Now, you really don't need that on a day like this because whether the Supreme Court, just as the case of former president, declared you the, declared the, the validly elected winner, it doesn't change the fact that during the election, people were killed, you know, um, there, there were um, speech watching hooligans, political hallelujah boys carrying, you know, um, microphone all around the street, threatening people that um, they shouldn't come out to vote if they aren't going to vote for your party. You know, um, that was the um, rule out the, the, the fact that um, INEC did not keep to the promise of the um, election itself. So the truth is, I would have loved to see a president that doesn't seek to validate itself, that leaves validation for the people and for the next election, I would have loved to see a president that would have said, okay, our democracy is here to stay, but it is not perfect. This is what we have done to start towards perfection, and this is what we are committed to do to make sure we have a kind of like more um, transparent um, electoral process. And um, I think Trump gave um, a name, he kind of like the cover of I think maybe he mentioned a special place or something. Um, I can add to that name, which is um, to decrease. You see, um, on a day like this, we need to look at the electoral process itself, because democracy is a government that you must come in through election. So we need to look at the process of the democracy itself, before we look at the, 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 the benefit the democracy itself will bring. So if you have a democracy, and we are celebrating it for 25 years, but your election was determined by the judiciary, and most of the state governments, the House of Red, the, the, um, the Senate, the elections were determined by the judiciary. That is in the true sense not a democracy, because the real power of the people to decide who should govern them has been, you know, um, taken over by um, less than 20 people, the judges, in the, the, the um, judicial system itself. That kind of government 
is what democracy in the true sense of mm. what is the best to describe as a judicacy, a situation whereby people can go and vote and you know uh, the panel of justice will sit down and begin to kind of like you know apportion vote, erase vote, nullify vote, and ultimately declare the winner. And whoever they decide that wins the election is automatically, you know, the, the president, the governor, or the senator, you know, um, uh, as the case is. So, to what we have to make is the duty. Then, the president talks about this, um, the um, hardship, you know, um, hardship that is, it is painful but necessary. You see, um, in the life of a man, in the life of a country, things cannot be going on, you know, fine and no, it can just be like um, a one way traffic. You know, but the thing is, when there is hardship, when there is reform, just like in the family, you know, um, if the father has money, everybody should be able to feel it. And when the father is broke, everybody should be able to kind of like, you know, um, adjust and understand that the father is broke. But thankfully, what we have in our democracy, especially in the Tunumbu government, is that the, 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 the well, reform that is there that are painful but necessary, you know, that thing is not collective. That thing is selective. Mm -hmm. Selective in the sense that you push all the pain to the masses. You know, the pain should be collective. So you, you can't say, you know, people should enjoy the pain, whereby at the end of the day, we all know that when the gates of the pain will come, it will be taken over by corruption because they won't even let the masses to kind of like invest the dividends of all these reforms. So we should have a system whereby the pain that is whatever thing that is should be should be connected. The pain is not connected if you use twenty one billion naira mm -hmm. to renovate the the the, the, right. the whole of the vice president. So in other words, you have used twenty one billion to renovate the home of one man mm -hmm. in a country where people are living like destitute, in a country where you know poverty is written only on people's faces. You know, the the pain is not um okay. Collective, if you are point, if you have the highest number of ministers in our democratic system, and this minister we have eight, there are eight we have eight, there are eight to eight we have special assistance and all that. That is not, it, right, it, you know, it, it's not, it's not a good form of um, management. So yeah. I, I disagree with the president that Nigeria has to be a pain. If Nigeria has to be a pain, definitely it should. Be a collective pain, and we should be thinking okay. of wow, Nigerians will no longer bear pain again, which is not to keep borrowing, but to see how we can empower the state for them to manage their resources in such a way All that right. if you are coming into a electoral post, if you are coming into um, an electoral office, you are okay, coming with great wisdom, great intellect to run the affairs of the state so that you can generate your resources and fund your government, pay tax to. The post of the uh, of the federal governor that you go to um, Abuja. So, so, so I, I like the fact that you've. Can you hear me, Doctor Deji? Can you hear me? Okay. So I like the fact that you've highlighted some things and you've talked about elections because the president in his speech even said we cannot have um, a democratic nation without having to have elections which is great but then the government have been um you know they've been criticized by lacking transparency and fairness in elections um elections are being hijacked and people are being bullied now i want to let us marinate on these words by someone he in fact is a public affairs analyst and he says nigeria's democracy has been hijacked by imposters who promote personal and private interests at the expense of the nation's viability and its future and that is chidi amuta so i want us to just marinate on this and we'll go on a short break where we just take our commercial break and when we come back we'll have more conversations on this please stay with us Yes. Okay. Okay. 
this cool the names let me take the names again Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's still the Democracy Day special where we're taking the milestones and challenges of celebrating 25 years of democracy in Nigeria. And we're still joined by Dr. Omoshola Deji, a political scientist. Professor Chris Mustafa, Mustafa Wonkobia Jr. is a convener Country First Movement and Comrade Mark Adebayo is the National Spokesperson Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP. Now, in the President's speech, um, that we saw this morning he said um, you know a nation cannot be truly democratic without holding elections that we have established a tradition of holding transparent open and fair elections give credence to our democratic bearing that we have experienced peaceful transitions of government affirms our democratic temperament now coming to you um, professor chris mustafa Wokabe, would you agree that we've had some form of transparency and fairness with our elections, especially with what um, Chidi Amuta has said when he said um, that Nigeria's democracy has been hijacked by imposters who promote personal and private interests at the expense of the nation's viability and future. Your take, please. I think you might be muted. You need to unmute. Let me say very clearly that successive administrations have uh, excelled in the rape of our democratic uh, space. Let me say without the occasion that uh, consistently those who superintend our enterprise have perfected the art of electoral larceny. Uh, my brother here uh, did say, I think with Mark, he did say at some point that uh, uh, it was a uh, Maria Abraham, at some point, acknowledged that the election that got him to power was badly flawed and began the process of uh, a rework of our electoral uh, programmatic, of our electoral um, order. But sadly, um, we saw in 2023 the most flawed election in our historicity. And I say this without a provocation. We saw the snatch it and run away with it programmatic. We saw an unwilling umpire who had refused after 12 months to acknowledge that the election that brought him to power was likely flawed. And we have seen people who are consistently gaslighting Nigerians uh, we saw an election that deepened our threat lines as a nation. We saw an election that threw decorum and decency to the winds. We saw an election that by every means, every parameter, every margin of decorum was mortally flawed. And that is not because I supported a candidate who didn't win, allegedly, because I met and and it was my brother here who said that uh, perhaps we have decided to redefine democracy to an order of the courts, where the courts tell us who actually won. You know, let me say, Rumor, that uh, we have never seen the kind of, the litany, the deluge of electoral petitions that we saw in 2023. We've never seen anything like it before. And that is because Nigerians have largely lost faith in the electoral process. So if there's anything this administration will do, it is to begin a holistic overhaul of our electoral programmatic. Because congruent with the uh, electoral process, the transparency, the dignity, the decency of the electoral process is uh, what we call democracy. Democracy is simply about the choice of the people about the right of the people to determine who governs them and who should superintend the nation. You know, if that right to choose who will be your leader is taken away from you, then there's a major problem. And that's what we, we have. 
to be. Uh, I feel that one of the uh, expectations I had of Mr. President was that he was going to address the mortality flood election. Even if it's to say that his government is interested in a holistic electoral reform, even if he's uh, unwilling to admit that the election that brought him to power at mortality flood, should have at least said that he is going to carry on uh, with the demand for electoral reform and the demand for electronic voting and uh, voting programmatic. But very sadly, very sadly, uh, this government has consistently tried to gaslight the Nigerian people. This government has consistently tried to make Nigerians look away from the mortality flood 25th of February election uh, 2023 and then the one that followed after in March. Uh, I think that if we must deepen the frontiers of democracy, uh, we must understand that there is no democracy without the right of the people to vote. And if that right is impugned, if that right is damaged, if that right is discredited, if that right is uh, is messed up by those who should pretend the state, then you cannot you cannot comfortably and confidently say that you have a democracy. So I believe that like the uh, this government must look at the transparency and the believability of the electoral process and electoral protocol. Okay, uh, well, Comrade Mark uh, Debayo, you are the national spokesperson of Coalition of United Political Parties. would like also to, uh, for you to give us that litmus test that you would want this, uh, our electoral process to pass. Because in the last 25 years, we've, we've had this uh, system of government, whether we call it democracy or civilian rule and all that. But the president did say that there are so many democracies that we have. One of them is the political democracy. So how would you rate the political democracy in your own words? And what litmus test, like I said, would you like our political process to pass for us to be able to trust it, to believe in it, and uh, to participate in it as we should? Comrade Adebayo, can you hear me? Oh, okay, now, okay. Uh, I can hear you now. Okay. Because uh, the, the, the line was breaking and uh, I think the network was uh, messing up uh, okay. our conversation. Do I need to... Uh, I, I was able to get the okay. uh, direction of your question. your question. Go ahead. In please. terms of... Uh, the identity and the status and realities of our electoral processes. Yes. Uh, if you recall, even the 1999 election that produced General Richard Gomba Sojo as Nigeria president was largely flawed, but far better than subsequent elections. There may be one election that we could say was. Uh, Mm, was like uh, transparent uh, that, that reflected the, the real wishes of the people was the was the singular election that brought in Buhari uh, in twenty fifteen uh, was it twenty fourteen or what? So um uh because of course people were fed up with Jonathan and they thought Buhari was the uh was going to be the we're going to be our liberator, don't mean that uh, we, are, we, are, we are going into a war from fire pan to, to fire. So there, there is actually no election that you could say is started, but the one for last year, the, la the one for last year, 2023, uh, was something that uh, we should not, we should never experience again in this country. New, principally, so what happened with the EMB, the election management body, INEC, you know, because um, if uh, the, they said they had the glitch and rest of that, I well, uh, that's left to to them to know whether that was true or not. But we, we really do not ha have, in the recess of it, we have not had free, fair, and credible election in this country, especially at the national level. Of, of course, also at the, at the sub national levels too. Because um, if you look at the kind of situation that is happening, in uh, uh, at the state level, for instance, at the level of local government elections, you know that it's just a caricature or whatever you can call it election. It's nothing. There's nothing electoral. There's nothing election. There's nothing like democracy in those in those uh, spaces. So I believe that um, 
Uh, we need a lot to do with our electoral processes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can, can hear you. Yes. Oh, so we 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 have a long way to go because uh, the, the kind of things we are in this country is not really election. This is something that is even worse than selection. Yeah. What are the specific What are the specific things that need to be done for the electoral process to be better? We've gone 25 years, and we shouldn't still be talking about the same flaws that we had 25 years ago. So what are the specific things that need to be corrected? Well, if, you see, we need to have people in government and the ele election management body that have the political will to do the right thing. We, we need people to do because, and then for the Nigerian people to also, you know, we almost achieved it in 2023 with this uh, mass, uh, massive obedient movement and rest of that. We almost, we almost achieved it. We almost, we almost, we almost did it. Unfortunately, the, the power that be managed to score through that process. So the people, because the people in government are not going to change, because they will not be, they will never tinker or tamper with the process that benefits them, that gives them the electoral future that they do not deserve, the, 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 a corrupt process that has been established. They will never do anything to, to, to change that. Yes, yeah, we are trying to do it well. Unfortunately, we, we, we couldn't see how far he will have gone with it. He uh, uh, died. Uh, Prematurely. So now, beside the liberal reform, look at all the reforms we have been carrying out since 25 years ago. Now we came up with the uh, with the permanent vote card card. We came out with the machines. We came up with what is, these are reforms that are not being allowed to work. They are not being allowed to work because somehow the politicians are found, the evil politicians, the bad politicians, the corrupt politicians have found a way to corrupt the system, no matter the technology introduced, no matter the size you are building it. So, they, they just make sure they move the, 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 the transparent processes of the of our elections. And that is why the people, the people, if we are able to muster the kind of movement that was moved last year into our election at a greater, at a higher level, at a greater velocity, come 2027, I think we might just be able to achieve a kind of political revolution that we desire in this country. So that is the thing. But for us to think that these people in government or that these people who are handling our elections will be able that we have enough fear of God, enough patriotism in them, enough sense of justice to be able to do the needful to ensure that our electoral processes are transparent, credible, free and fair. No, we are just wasting our time. So the people must get organized in a better way to take the destiny of this country out of our elections into our, into our own hands through the through the ballot through the election. it is achievable we almost did it last year it was, it was almost achieved last year so with better organization with greater strategy we'll be able to achieve it and once that happened we'll, we'll be able to it, it was done in Senegal if Senegal could, could do it we should be able to do it we should be able to do it in our history in Africa we saw last year or even this, last year how the Senegalese rose against a system that was defied, depriving the people the benefits of their democracy and elections and then they were able to produce the, 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 the president that they really that everybody will know this is the fear this is the result of our of our foes so we, sh we should be able to do that in this country and we must be able to do it and all right the responsibility to do that is on activists is on professionals is on the general citizenry but we are not going to wait for the people in government and people in the institutions, the establishment, to do it. The people must improve on what we did last year. And we shall get there. We shall get there. Amen but to the that. Responsibility is a collective responsibility of the people. Yeah. Mm. All right. So, I mean, that's for political matters and elections. Um, in a democracy, we also expect, in fact, some economic democracy, as the, as the president said in his speech. And he talked about, he said, I understand the economic difficulties we face as a nation. Our economy has been in desperate need for reforms for decades. And then he goes on to say that, you know, um, we need to reform the economy. So he said, I, as I continue to reform the economy, I would always listen to the people and I would never turn my back on you. Now, this is the mm. president's speech. Obviously, as we mm. know, as of today, inflation is at an all-time high. General inflation is about 33.69% and food inflation is at 40%. 
um, the environment, the business environment is not really sustainable for businesses. And so most manufacturing companies are leaving Nigeria. Our economy is really, really dwindling. And the standard of living has depleted over the years. Now, do you think that we need certain reforms that maybe the president is not even thinking about? And if you were to advise the government on certain reforms that we need to impute into our system, especially if we're saying we have a democracy where the government is listening to the people and doing what the people need. What would that be? And I'm speaking to you, um, Deji or Mashallah. Well, um, thanks for the question. Okay, I'll try to link my answer with what um, my brother Mark just said, you know, as, as we got the um, technical mm -hmm. scenario. If we have got the um, economy, you know, making life more convenient for the people, you know, this has been the reform of our electoral process. You see, we need to revise and remodel the human mind. Both, you know, um, those in power and those that are, are those that are governing, you know, on. We need to be a revival of the um, human mind because, so for example, the, the last um, election, you see um, a, a situation whereby people went all out, but then they are all spread, spread that, and that has killed the interest in, you know, the politics and, you know, uh, democracy. So, in the next election, we might be witnessing political uh, party. Now, how does that link to the um, economy and government itself? So, long as politicians know that they can maneuver their way into power without the, 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 the input or less input of the electorate, there won't be development in the country. There will be um, there will be a electoral reform. So we agree with me that the the, the actual politician is like you know um perhaps a university student. You know um, as much as you are trying to kind of like instill knowledge into them, they are finding ways for um, electoral mapati and If it is possible for you to just award them their degree, certainly they will just you know collect it and go home. So for every politician. If there's no real check and balance which the movement tends to instill by creating a periodic election every four, four years in our system, if the electoral process is set is not accurate, they will be accountable to the people. Instead of that, they will be kind of you know, speaking how to flourish their power with those in INF, the political godfathers, the, the current agencies that will compromise the election for them, and all that. So we need to kind of like divide the human mind in such a way that in the next um, election, people are kind of like interested. That great um, um, electoral or political spirit that was killed by the flawed electoral process in the city needs to be revived. Then we need also remodel the human mind in such a way that we don't have a lot of disoriented citizens. In such a way that we have people that can kind of like say that knows they are left from right, that knows that they need kind of like you know, participate in the process and hold be that um, accountable. Remember the human mind in such a way that you know um, when you tell people about election, they don't kind of like you know bring out cosmos and start pursuing you. Remember the human mind in such a way that the part of the street we know that some the, the politics of some of these politicians that are turned them into um, a town. Remember the, 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 the human mind in such a way that people don't have to snap ballot box, you know, for, for a politician on the election day. So when you report them the human mind and the, 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 the average politician you know that he cannot get that power without, you know, having to kind of like contribute tremendously to the, to the society and in particular his constituency, then he will begin to perform just like the, the average student that is block all means of Makati, they will read. You know, so we should begin to have that for, for our politicians that this should translate into economic reform that will bring development into the policy that there will be there will be this for a government that truly cares the people. You know, yeah, in the democracy the government should be very afraid of the people. But we have a government that is not afraid of the people. If you remove subsidy, it will give an electricity tariff and over one year you still have to, you know, go into combat with labor to increase the, 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 the uh, 
minimum wage. That shows that you don't hear the people itself. You know, so for example, in in um, in Asia, Malaysia has to be precise. Government introduced what they call government service tax. It's commonly called GST, six percent. You know, and the truth is, the next election, that government lost the election just because of that GST. You know, after that, the election lost the election. You know, so the the, the, the incoming government has to revert the policy. That is what democracy is all about. It's not the way that you tell the people that if I increase electricity and electricity tariff, you know, what it affect the people and will actually have that support that I kind of like, you know, pledge to the people. Then, um, if I can kind of like touch on a one major thing, you see, the president himself, based on the scheme of his government, renewed hope. His speech failed to kind of like give that renewed hope to the um, citizens. And going forward, I would like to have a thinking presidency because I believe that the president has people that are more brilliant than me, he has it, that are more qualified than me, he has to just um, see that he can, he, yeah, he can um, have at this point in time. But one missed point for the president on a day like this is what the government has done in terms of, you know, um, heading to the Supreme Court to kind of like advocate for the freedom of the local government. On a day like this, you know, when we are sending democracy, that action I believe is a step towards entrenching democracy. Unfortunately, all in aid in totality makes that crucial point, which is a disservice to the president himself because because I'm thinking in my head that, okay, um, you know, the Tinumba administration has had so much failures, but what are some of the little, you know, um, most fast achievements that I can say is the president, you know, is to do the attorney general going to the Supreme Court to seek an interpretation of the constitution in such a way that the local government will be independent. You know, just as the state has some level of independence of the federal, the local government should also have some level of independence from the state, but this crucial, you know, um, um, free achievement because, because it's not yet, the judgment has not yet been delivered, but I think the judgment will go in favor of, you know, the, the federal government. This was missed out on a day like this. So what I want to see going forward is a coaching presidency, you know, when you have a retinue of aid, those, that should show in the delivery of governance, in the performance of your governance, and in a speech like this, because if I'm to judge that speech, they definitely I'm going to judge uh, that something better. So imagine the tables that those speech would have passed to. It doesn't mean that those people are not reading the speech, or they just kind of like ratified and gave it to the president and missed out such an important point as that. You know, so I think the, the, the president himself needs to look within and make sure that he, you know, he has good aid. Another thing is we should have. Um, um, a system whereby the president himself is kind of like very, very strong because we can't remove the fact that in Nigeria we have a, a, a lot of people who we kind of like um, be around the president just for what they want to do. And that's why I said that, you know, in a democracy, especially the kind of policies we will practice, the president should be as strong as a goalkeeper in such a way that, you know, that's why the people lining up in his court, if they want to take a free kick at the edge of the 18 yard box, you know, the way the, the, uh, the goalkeeper will be stretching his neck, you know, just, just so that he can see when the ball is coming. I think going forward, we need a democratic generational change whereby we can have people that are much younger, people that when they take decisions in government, they will see their lives, will see the consequence of such, you know, um, decisions that they are taking. So we should begin to kind of like rejig our system for efficiency, but we, we know what to do. For example, I expect in this speech that the president should have talked about you know, um, constitutional amendment, what the executive arm of government desire in terms of constitutional amendment to strengthen our democratic system. That was also missed out in this Speech because every every um, every democratic dispensation will always have constitutional uh, constitutional amendment. The abandoned left senate have talked about constitutional amendment. You know, so this or this speech is an opportunity for the president to have, you know, 
talked about the position of the executive and what the executive is in terms of constitutional amendment, but the, the executive can also send a bill. And so these are some of the, the, the myths in this kind of like um, in this speech, apart from what the, 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 the president failed to face, failed to present in terms of how his government is bringing Stockholm to the people, which is what the average Nigerian really wants to hear at this point in time. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Deji. Um, just a quick one, and everybody, gentlemen, has to be very uh, uh, straight to the point as we answer this question. It's just one question for all of you. We've been blaming the government. We've been blaming politicians who are in government and all that, but none of us has really, uh, even though we've touched it uh, a little bit, none of us has really uh, talked about the office of the citizen, as it were, and we need to know the role that people need to play. Citizens of Nigeria need to pray, play for democracy to work. And like I said, we need to be very brief. We'll have like uh, two to three minutes to wrap it up. So let me begin with you, um, Professor Chris. What is the office of the citizen failing at that has brought us here? And what can we do uh, after, uh, to make it better? Very briefly, please. You have good. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can hear you. Very well, I did say, and um, uh, maybe you didn't remember very well, I did say that uh, the time has come for the masses of our people to organize rather than organize. And I did talk about the need for the media to consistently uh, do what it did uh, during the June 12th struggle. And the media must continue to serve as a watchdog because eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. Mm. We must understand going forward that this country is our collective patrimony. And I did say, um, and I want to repeat for the often time, that the pathway to freedom, the pathway to democracy, the pathway to freedoms uh, that is necessary to take our country out of the matter to promise is for citizen participation, citizen action. The media must rise up, the civil society must wake up, okay. and we must demand uh, that government become responsible and responsive to the people. We must, in line with what my colleagues and I have said here, uh, insist that there must be a holistic overhaul of our electoral laws, there must be a holistic overhaul of our constitution, Dito and showing, uh, and let me say quickly that the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria should cease forthwith to appoint the National Electoral Umpire. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can think that at best it should be the Chief Judge of the Federation or perhaps the Council, the Council of State. There must be some kind of independence for the man who superintends our national election. Uh, it shouldn't be about the puppet and the puppeteer. Right. It shouldn't be about the man, uh, the old cliche, he who calls the he who pays the pipe or calls the tune. Okay. We must ensure that we have some kind of independence for the man who superintends our electoral process. All right. And then lastly, uh, we must understand, and this uh, should go out resoundingly, that those who criticize government, those who disagree with government, are not enemies of government. They are those who are interested in ensuring that leadership is responsible and responsive to our people, and they are those who are interested in ensuring that we have a country that works for all. All right, thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. So, Comrade Mark, let's go to you. We have 30 seconds for you, please. So, just let us know um, what the Office of the Citizen is and how we can ensure that we're enforcing it. Comrade Mark? Hello? Yes. Please go ahead. Yes? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Uh, I didn't hear that question. The line was The office of the citizen. How can we enforce yes. that whereby our voices are being heard, especially when we're celebrating 25 years of democracy? You have like 30 seconds, please. To wrap up. Well, well, okay. What is important is that the office of the of the citizen, which is the most important office in the land, anyways, yes. is is for us to be proactive in in terms of uh, demanding demanding and getting what is necessary for our economy to, to to move forward, for our democracy to be better, for our elections to be more transparent. With the, the citizen must be continue to be active 
and being proactive in demanding as a, as a right the best that we could get from our government. We must never, we must never retreat, we must never surrender. We must right. never retreat, we must never surrender. We right. continue no pushing, surrender. we continue you know, advocating until we get what we want from the system. That okay. is what the citizen must continue to do consistently. All right, thank you so much. You. And finally, Dr. Deji, would like to get your comment on this as well. Well, um, what can I, what I can um, say as regards the citizen action is, you know, um, Nigerian citizens, you've been economically bastardized, you've been um, moved close to destitution, mm -hmm. but the main goal of doing that is for you to give up. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. If you don't give up, you would, you know, um, get there one day, and lastly, don't um, see your vote as a drop in the ocean, and mm -hmm. begin to see that your vote you know, um, doesn't count that you already know what to put there, who they want to put there, and all that. No. See your vote as a crucial part of the ocean, not a drop in the ocean. Mm -hmm. When you begin to see your vote as a crucial part of the ocean, and I begin to see my vote as a crucial part of the ocean, then we, be, we, be, we begin to ask a kind of like call for collective action in such a way that my mind is made up to vote, to defend my vote, to make sure my vote is counted. Your mind is made up as well. Then we begin to add like a kind of like deep um, leadership, organic leadership that stems from the true will of the people. Then All right. our people begin to have a Thank better you. democracy Thank and so by extension a greater society. Thank All you. right. Thank, Thank you, you so doctor. much. Um, uh, I mean, <laughs> gentlemen, you've spoken very well. And I hope that our leaders are listening to this. We're celebrating 25 years of democracy. And we just don't want it to be marking an, an, an anniversary of civil rule. We hope that our voices will truly be heard. Mm. We're doing our best um, as activists, as professionals that are speaking up and speaking for what is right. And we hope that one day we will say Nigeria mm -hmm. is practicing true and de genuine democracy. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming. It was lovely having our Democracy Day special with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us, my dear. Thank you. Amen. All right, we've been speaking with Dr. Dejo Mashola. He is a political scientist, uh, Professor Chris Mustafa Wonkobia Jr. He's a convener, Country First Movement, and Comrade Mark Adebayo is a spokesperson for co the coalition of um, United Political Parties, CUPP. And we've just been having an, um, a Democracy Day special where we've been talking about the milestones and challenges that we'll face in Nigeria celebrating 25 years. And this is the end of the show today. It's been a lovely mm -hmm. conversation, uh, you know, highlighting all the challenges that we have and looking forward to a better and more prosperous Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If you got nothing from today, just remember the final things they said. Uh, what words were demand for what is right and mm -hmm. then never give up. And that's how we are going to leave you this morning. Yes. Thank you for being a part of this Thank show Thank you today. so much. Happy Democracy Day today. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say happy birthday to a friend of mine here, Chiku Ibeji. He's a democracy baby. So <laughs> happy birthday to him. Happy birthday. And happy Democracy Day to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having a breakfast with us. My name is Rome Paulson. And I'm Nyamgul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow. Have an amazing day.